Hi, I'm Sam from Made by Erilent, and today I'm going to be showing you the pattern Peony by Sophisticated Craft. So, Jassy's written this pattern um, to give us a lot of options, again, as Jassy tends to do with her patterns. So, I've made all three of the versions that she has available for us. So, we have a directional print version, so this is where your print is obviously directional. I've used a panel on this one, and then as you can see, your prints are all directional, and you've got your internal. The second version and the third version are for non-directional prints. So you've got two versions of non-directional prints that you can do as well. So the first is your flap being one, and then the exterior of the rest is a, another one as well. And your third is the... Um, same exterior throughout with a non-directional print. So as you can see, this is a badge and that is all exactly the same. Now to give you an idea on this one, so Jassy originally designed this to be a Lunar New Year, a Chinese New Year bag. She got requested a fair bit um, by friends and family for a bag that they could use for their Hong Baos, red packets, lices, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'll just zoom in to show you. So it's got a magnetic snap opening. Um, and then on the inside, it's then got dividers. So you've got one, two, three, four sections, and then a zipper section. So the reason for all the sections is when you give out red packets, um, you have different denominations for how close the people are. So some people give them ten dollars, others twenty. But obviously, they're in a red packet, so you can't see them. So when you've got the different um, slips, you're then able to put your ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars separate, so you can grab them out and give them the right one. Now, the zipper pouch then also means that you can keep your own personal things in there as well. This is designed to be either a crossbody wristlet or just a like purse in your handbag and Jassy's given us options for how that works as well. I've made all three of mine crossbodies because I think this is going to be my new day-to-day -day bag. Um, so some of the options include using a grommet. She's also given us the option of using D-rings. Um, I've then also done one using um, those O-ring Chicago screw ones as well. So these are all options we can do give you an idea on the inside of this phone so this is bag sorry not phone this is my one that I may be keeping for myself I haven't decided yet um, so I've got in my different compartments I have been able to fit in my phone um, passport because I thought this could actually be a really good airport traveling bag as well um, my card holder which is also a sophisticated pattern um, I use this as my day-to-day -day wallet and then in the zipper section I then have my car keys because I've got one of those non-car key car keys if that makes sense so just put that in there don't have to remember it's there and then lipstick and pen there was still room so I could definitely put more things in there I think um, sunglasses would go really nicely in one of those slots as well so just some ideas. Um, in terms of fabric choices, I've done them in a few different options now. So this one is a, I guess a suede heel faux leather vinyl. Um, and inside I've used in a cotton canvas that's waterproof treated. And my gusset and my divider panels are all made with sophisticated twill, which is a waterproof um, material. And then my pocket is then used um, I used the um, cotton canvas again for this one. Um, with this one, this is an all vinyl faux leather uh, make. This is a lychee pattern, as you can see. Um, the inside pocket, I've actually really pushed it, and I did um, the faux leather vinyl for the exterior of the zipper pocket as well, and I've lined it with sophisticated twill just to reduce that bulk a little bit. And all of this is, again, sophisticated twill for the rest of that. And my last one is a um, WPC 420D, so 420 density uh, waterproof canvas. This was one that I had um, custom printed by Sophisticated Supplies as well. So 
um, I accidentally cut my paddle a little bit too short, so I've added a vinyl strip. That was a me thing. Um, inside, I've used again the WPC 420 for the zipper, um, zipper pocket, and then the rest of this is again sophisticated twill. So, just to give you those ideas. Now, in this video, I am going to show you how all three of these versions come together. The difference, the interior is exactly the same so the way that they're constructed is exactly the same and it's just the external has slight differences but i will show you how we do all of those and um yeah thanks for coming on the ride Yay! okay so i've pre-decided on all the exterior choices so i'll just quickly show you so i'm going to use this one which is a faux leather um exterior chosen a wool blend and a um, brown faux leather as the non-directional print number two for my directional print i have gone with a um, canvas so this is cotton canvas now um i've pre-cut all the fabric um a because no one wants to watch me cutting fabric that's boring and b the dimensions so obviously all the dimensions are listed on Jassy's sophisticated um, pattern so um, I don't want to risk um, giving out her pattern measurements or anything like that because obviously that's her livelihood so I've also put down this ugly piece of white cardboard on top of my cutting mat just you know I know you guys won't do the wrong thing but you know just to just to make sure we all keep it clean so um, I'll show you each ones of those separately just to give you an idea of what you need to cut. Um, if you are a new bag maker or no one has told you this before, it took me nine months of making bags before I realized iron your fabrics. Iron them before you start and you will have a much more professional looking bag at the end with a lot less effort. So here's what i prepared earlier what i've always wanted to say so with the directional print what we're going to do is we're going to cut two of this piece here which they're all labeled under jassy's patterns so everything is labeled and then we've also got the flap as well so we're cutting three pieces flap and the exterior body and the exterior body so that they can each be facing the right direction um, one of the things that I love so much about Jassy's patterns is that not only does she give you all the pattern pieces, so all the rectangles, squares, every little piece is there as a pattern. But if you don't want to do it as well, she also gives you a cut list. And in the cut list, she has every single piece's measurements in inches and centimeters. So if you're anything like me, I don't like cutting out of pattern pieces. Um, I just find it easier to use my big giant rectangle, measure it up, cut it, and then trim. So I then am able to get the pattern pieces. Um, this is one that I've cut up using my Cricut because she also gives us um, all the SVG files as well. So I use the uh, Cricut to cut out the pattern pieces. And then after I've cut my rectangle, I just trim it to size. So it just makes cutting process a lot easier for me. Um, obviously that doesn't work for everyone. So however works for you works. So that is your directional version. Now for your non-directional, um, the whole piece version. So version one, nice and simple. It's one big piece of fabric. And obviously, as it is finished, to give you an idea, it will look something like that. Ta-da! There we go, bag done. No, obviously not. <laughs> and the second version is the directional with, uh, non-directional, sorry, version two. So with your two different fabric choices. So I've gone for, so you then make two pieces. Sorry. Sorry, that was the toddler. So this is the non-directional um, version two. So with this one, you'll have two pieces. So you've got the piece that is your backing, oh, or your exterior, sorry, I should say, and your flap. So when this is done, it'll look something like that, just to give you an idea. 
that will be folded back a little bit as well but yep that kind of gives you an idea of how that will look as well obviously with the flap um, I've chosen to go, on, go for a non-directional flap as well but you can also actually do a directional print on the flap so just because obviously that's all on its own so you can you know mix and match it so there is a lot of versions of this bag to make it work okay so here are all our internal pieces that i've already pre-cut so regardless of what exterior style you choose so this one is my style c directional internal layout the internal is exactly the same so i'm just going to show you once um, now all of these pieces like i've mentioned before with sophisticated patterns come with their SVG files, cut lists, and all the pattern pieces. So however you choose to cut it, you're able to do that easily. So over here we have our A1, which is our main lining piece. So that's the piece when you look at the completed bag, it's this back section in through here, and then comes out through here, this part here. And then after that, we then have our um, divider pockets so our divider pocket and our zipper pockets they're exactly the same size um, but they are listed separately under the cut list so you need two lots of the um, zipper pocket panels as well as two lots of the divider pocket panels so just to give you an idea so your divider pockets are these ones here this one and this one and this is of course your zipper pocket so I like to use a different internal material to the external material inside the zipper um, purely because I don't like to waste um, my fancy fabric on the interior of a zipper. So as you can see, my exterior and my interior are different, but my divider, I've decided to go with the same fabric. Um, the pattern pieces has given us the measurements as if it was a non-directional fabric which would be the case for most of the time as you saw in my other make they were all just your twill um, in this case i decided to do use a directional fabric for my zipper so i'll just come in a little bit more so i've still cut according to the cut list but i've added half an inch on the height and then after I've added half an inch, I've then cut it in half and then sewed it together bottom to bottom with a quarter inch seam allowance right sides together. I've then opened it up and then top stitched it with the seam pressing to their own respective sides. And I've top stitched that at one eight of an inch. So that then gives us the exact same measurements as the one piece would have but the directions are now facing the right way when it is made up as a zipper pocket as you can see that way it's all facing the right way that way it's all facing the right way now after that piece we then also have over here your side gusset, gusset pieces so that's your piece e in the pattern um, which are this section here on both sides so that's your side cassette pieces there are four lots of those obviously all of this is written in the pattern and the instructions and then we also have a zipper tab as well as over here we've got the um, d-ring tabs as well so if you're not using a d-ring connector then you won't need that if you are then that's your d-ring tab and that's all of your interior pieces and I'll talk about the stabilizer next as well. Okay, so here we are with the stabilizer. So the pattern calls for heavyweight stabilizer. So that's things like your Decavals Heavies and your Peltex. I'm using Sophisive Foam by Sophisticated Supplies. So this is the heavyweight. So as you can see, it's not as thick as what you would expect foam to normally be like. It's got really good structure but it's not crazy bulky like what you find here in Australia. Um, you Aussies know it's not easy for us to find good crafting supplies here. <laughs> so this is your Sophisive Heavy and that's what I'm using. Any of the scraps that you cut off, make sure you save that because we're gonna use those as well when we do the magnetic snaps. So don't throw those in the bin just yet, you're gonna keep those. 
Um, now with interfacing, do you need to interface? That's definitely a personal question, I think. Um, all of the materials that I've chosen today are cotton canvas or um, vinyl. So vinyl, you don't need to. The cotton canvas that I use, it's actually quite a decent thickness and it's non-fray. So with that, I'm not interfacing. But if you're using cotton woven, an easy fray fabric, or something just really lightweight or stretchy, definitely interface it with a cotton woven interfacing. Not cotton woven, just woven interfacing. I don't know why I added cotton there. Anyway, and now for the rest of the stuff that we need. So we'll also need one piece of zipper, obviously a zipper pull if you're using um, continuous zipper tapes. Um, two D-rings, so the pattern calls for half inch D-rings. Obviously, if you don't have half inches, you want to use bigger ones, smaller ones, whatever size. You just have to adjust your D-ring fabric for the um, width of the D-ring that you choose. And then, obviously, your magnetic snap closures. So make sure you have your male part, your female part, as well as your two washers. So that's all of the materials that we need. So we're going to get on to constructing it now. Okay, so this part is for your D-ring connectors. So if you're not going to use a D-ring, um, you won't need to do this. So I am using two D-rings so that I can use this as a crossbody bag. Now, here's our D-ring piece. So what I've done is this is the um, right side, that's the wrong side. On the wrong side, I've marked the centers with a little dot on the fabric um, on either side and what I'm going to do now is get some double-sided tape and I'm just going to put it pretty much right on that line so right on those dots so that it is pretty much centered it's not quite but it's good enough and then I'm going to peel off the backing and I'm going to fold the long sides onto that tape so that it is nice and folded. Now in this, what I'm doing right now is um, making, D, making the D-ring connectors for half inch D-rings like the pattern has um, in it. So obviously if you don't have half inch D-rings and you've got bigger D-rings, then you just need to cut this part wider to accommodate for your D-rings. So now that I've got both centers stuck down, I don't know how well you can see that. So it's all stuck down now. So that's my D-ring connector. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch that with one eighth of an inch. Um, so I've got my set to top stitch. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this, so um, my machine is a vintage um, Singer 201. So it's neither an industrial nor a um, domestic. It was marketed at the time as a domestic, but it is definitely stronger than the domestics nowadays. So I've just finished that one side. Now I'm just doing the other. So that's done for the D-ring connectors. So, here we go. So see how that's all top stitched now and good to go. So what I'll do now is I'm going to fold this in half and then I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut it. So now I have two equal parts of folded um, D-ring connectors. And then I'm going to slide the D-rings in, just like that. And then I'm also going to stitch that closed too. So it's just a base stitch, just to, um, yep, just to baste it on there. So because it will be properly stitched as we assemble the bag. So it just needs the basting stitch just to Keep it all together so the D-ring doesn't escape and you lose it, which happens to me quite regularly, to be honest. 
So that's all done. And then now that we've made our D-ring connectors, our two D-ring connectors with D-rings on it, we are going to put these two aside and get started on the next section. Okay, now we're going to move on to the zipper tape. Um, good practice is to make sure you always singe the ends of your zipper tape. This just stops your zippers from fraying. As you can see, like this part's already frayed. So just give it a nice little singe just to stop that fraying from happening. Now, um, continue your zipper tape, obviously. So put your zipper on. I like to pay attention to um, which section was longer. And then so that way, as I'm putting the zipper in, I put the section that was slightly longer in first and then I kind of hold it down and push it. Push this one goes down and this one just pushes pressure on it. And then that's your zipper tape on nice and easy. So then we're going to get our zipper tape tab, um, place it right sides together with your zipper tape. Um, I've since learned instead of clipping it up the top here, you're better off clipping on the sides. So when you clip on the sides like that, you kind of stop it from wiggling as much. So let's do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew this at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's now done. Take that off. And what we're now going to do is just to after cut the thread, obviously, is open this up, press that flat, and we're going to spin this to the back like that. And then we're going to fold this in and bring that back down so that it matches up with the stitch line that you've just done. Okay, so now that we've folded that to the back, we're going to top stitch this with a 1 8 seam allowance. So just make sure when you're looking at it that your top and your bottom will be caught. Um, if you folded it and made sure that it is either on or just covers that line, then you will be fine. So sew that up, close that off, and there we go. So that is your zipper tab now installed. And now that the zipper tab is on, the next thing we want to do is measure 6 5 8 of an inch from the base. And we're going to put a mark down. So I've just got that up next to a ruler and we're going to mark 6 5 8. I like to mark it nice and close so that way I don't have to use any specialty pen or anything like that. I've also already marked the other side, so as you can see, that is marked there with two tiny dots. What we're now going to do, so, is we're going to open this up. And we are going to fold the dot up like that. So that this is now a 90 degree angle. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So pinch that point, pull it up. There's heaps of different ways that people like to get this angle right. Um, I found for me, pinching it, pulling it up to the zipper tape is the easiest way for me. And then we clip that. And then now what we're going to do is we're just going to stitch right along there and right along there just so that that will hold in its place. Just gonna be using a basting stitch. Um, if you have a stiletto, um, this is the perfect time to use it, or just really anything to help hold things in place. So I like to use my stiletto to just really hold that fold down to make sure um, it doesn't move so that I can have as much control as possible without you know, putting my finger in harm's way. And if it pops open, that's okay. Just, that's why your stiletto is great because it just kind of, see how I've got it kind of just holding it right there where my fingers can't normally reach. And 
that is your zipper done. So now that we've finished off our zipper tape, so we've got our 90 degrees on one side, zipper tab on the other, making sure obviously, I think I've said that before, if not, I'm sorry, that it's closed that direction and it opens towards that way. Now, once we've got that all done, now we're going to install the zipper tape. So I like to move my zipper to one side because what we're going to have to do now is find the center point. So to do that, I fold my L right up to my zipper tab. So this part here is now obviously my center. So I just get a pen and I'm going to just quickly mark those two spots just close to the edge so it'll get lost in the seam allowance right there. Now I am going to sew on the exterior pocket fabric first. If your pocket, pocket fabric you're using the exact same for the interior and the exterior then this part well then it doesn't matter which side you choose but because I am using a different fabric on the external as I am to the internal so I'm doing the external first. So I like to fold it in half and I like to do a little snip just on that corner there, nice and tiny so you're within the seam allowance. And so when that opens back up, that then has a little cut on your middle center points there. So I'm going to match up my center point of my fabric and my center point of my zipper tape and I'm going to do them right sides together. So the zipper tape is facing downwards and my fabric is facing up. And then I'm matching my little nodge, my little nodge, is that what it's called? The cut to the little dot that I marked on there. And I'm just gonna clip that spot. I'm going to now move my zipper tape out of the way a little bit because I'm gonna sew from this end. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Just put that right there. And then what I'm going to do now is I am going to base stitch that together at 1 8 seam allowance. So, so this is just to hold it in place. Yep. So that's now basted. So, as you can see, if I flop it over, you've got, it looks like that, but otherwise it's centered and it's right sides together. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get my other piece of zipper pocket fabric. Now, now it's my internal piece if I am using two different fabrics like I am. And right sides down. So you want right side of the internal and the right side of the external facing each other. So your right sides together and the zipper tape sandwiched in between. So I've matched the sides to sides like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew it with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you are new at sewing zippers, one of the biggest tips is to be wary of where your zipper pull is. So my zipper pull is all the way down here and I'm sewing up here at the moment. So I still have a little bit of space. So as I sew, just before I get to my zipper pull, I've got to make sure my needle is down, pull that up and get my zipper out of the way. So that just helps me keep a um, nice and even seam allowance because the zipper pull is not in the way and pushing out my seam allowance. So, just on that on your quarter inch seam allowance. Easy. Okay, now that that is done, just trim off those edges. So we have that all sewed together at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to flop it and then I am going to make sure, just kind of flatten the seam so that each, the internal and external is pulling away from the zipper. And then I'm going to flatten it. And then I'm going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. 
So when you top stitch, um, I think it's normal. I don't know if it's just a known thing. Um, lengthen your stitch length. Um, it just gives a cleaner, nicer stitch length. I sometimes find, depending on the type of fabric that you use, with twill I don't have to worry as much. Once I've kind of folded it, it holds in place. But if you're using a fabric that tends to shift a lot, it's nice to just kind of pull on the bottom with one hand and on the other hand, make sure that the top is flat. So that kind of keeps everything nice and flat so it's easier to top stitch as well. So that's now done and top stitched. Now the next step, is we're going to get the bottom of the exterior fabric and we're going to line it up with the top. So you can either mark the center point again like you did before or because this is the exact same exterior as the other side, I can just line it up to the sides here and make sure it all lines up. As long as it lines up, then that should be centered and we are all good. Again, make sure your zipper tape is out of the way to start with so that you have enough room to get started. And we are going to baste this down. So right now, again, the exterior is facing right sides together to the zipper tape. Uh, so we're just doing a little basting stitch here. And I should have held my threads down at the back. I didn't, that's why that was happening. Now, we got to the point where I'm close to my zipper now, so I'm just going to make sure my needle is down, pull that up, and move my zipper out of the way. Zipper's out of the way, put that back down, and we keep going. Perfect. Now that that's base stitched together, we are going to do the same with the other side pocket fabric, so the lining side. We're going to match it up to the top. So this one would be right sides together with the other internal fabric. So what you will end up with right now, if you look on the side, is two little loops. So you've got your external and your internal and they're not looped together and your zipper tape is right there. there. And we're going to sew this together at a quarter inch seam allowance. So good practice is to hold your thread end. It helps stop um, bird's nest forming. I sometimes forget. So here we go. And I'm just about where my zipper pull is. So needle down and pull your zipper back. A lot of modern machines, I think I've read that you don't need to worry about your needle down. It automatically stays in the down position. I, I don't know how that works. I only ever sew with vintages. So if your machine does it for you automatically, lucky you, and you don't have to worry about that step. Okay, now, so we've done that now at a quarter inch. Pull that out and cut the threads so I have a lot of threads everywhere so that's now all sewn together as you can see we have a bit of excess zipper tape here so now if you haven't already done it you can cut it off now you could cut it off earlier as well I tend to leave it till after I've stitched it together to cut now like I've said before always good practice to give it a little burn after you've cut any zipper tape. Try not to burn your fabric. So other side as well, make sure you cut both sides off, trim that and then burn it. There. Just be careful to just burn off the ex um, extending bits and not um, actual part of your zipper tape. So that's all done now and sewn together. You've got your two loops of fabric and we're going to turn it right side out. So the easiest thing I've found is just to open your zipper tape as much as possible. I mean, if you're sewing like I am at the moment with canvas and twill, turning this right side out shouldn't be too hard. But if you decided to push it like I did before the line and did vinyl, opening that zipper definitely helps give you that bit more space. So. That's the one that we top stitched earlier, so that's all done. 
and this side is now the side that we need to top stitch. So obviously there's a zipper in the way. What I found to be the easiest way to top stitch this section is to actually do it um, inside out. So when you're top stitching inside out, the biggest thing to watch out for is that your thread tension is right. Um, to be honest, I'm still not very clear about thread tension and how it all works. I know that it's to do with your bobbin and your top thread. And I just, just spin this knob until I get to the right one. So hopefully you're better at that than I am. Um, but all we're doing now is just stitching that top stitch, but from the underneath. And we're making sure our fabric is nice and flat and tall, especially since we're doing this from the bottom. So you can't see the top and you don't know how well you're doing. Now, I hope I don't cover this up. So as we get down to this zipper part, obviously this is in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flop this over like that and I'm going to pull it down as far as I can so I can keep seeing what I'm doing and just let the machine kind of guide me. And I'm pulling back as I go and I'm just trying to see as much as I can and hold that back to make sure that it's nice and flat and I've gotten to the end. So now I'm just gonna pull this all out from under the machine with bated breath and hope that it worked. And it did, so it sewed all the way to the end. Now we're gonna close that up. So now you have your zipper pocket. So now just to finish it off, all we're gonna do is we're going to put a clip. Make sure you match the top sides up together and then we're just going to baste this edge together. I said this fabric doesn't fray and it looks like I'm lying, but I swear I'm not. <laughs> so I just need to clean that up a little bit as well. So here we go, I'm just basting this up together. And then same on the other side. I like to move the zipper pull out of the way, clip that together. And then we're just basting it. Um, in case I didn't say it on the other side, um, basting is one eighth, one eighth of an inch. So what we're doing here is just keeping it together so that when we do the final assembly, it all comes together easier without the pieces moving about. So clip off all your loose threads. Hopefully you're not as messy as I am. And that's your zipper pocket now done. You can see it opens and closes, interior, and we're now going to put that aside to work on our next segment. I'm going to move on to is the divider pockets. So this next step is for people who have label tags. So I've got um, my own um, made by Erlent tags. Sometimes people might use uh, motivational tags that you can buy. Um, generic tabs, anything like that. If you don't have them, that's also completely fine and you don't need these. So what we're going to do if you do use a tag is we're going to get your divider fabric. Um, so you've got two lots of them, just either one's fine. And then you're going to measure, so Jassy says at least one and a half inches. Or is it one and a quarter? One and a quarter inch. Um, I'm going to do one and a half over here. And then I'm just going to line it up and put it down there. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, this just means that it's kind of out of the way, but it's also not too prominent. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up. We've got that set. And then we're going to baste this on. I'm being lazy at the moment and I'm actually just hand cranking this through. So that's now basted on. And then the next step we're going to do after basting that on is actually sewing this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the bottom, fold it to the top, line it up so it's right sides together and we're going to clip that together. Yep, so we're going to sew it together at one quarter of a seam allowance. Here we 
go. And now that we're done, so that's sewed together, right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to come into these corners here and we're going to trim the corner off. So the reason we're doing this is to reduce the bulk at final assembly. So if I cut that off just in a little, so I don't know how well you can see it, but I've not trimmed my stitching. So it's just above the stitching and I'm literally just trimming that corner off just, oops, just to kind of, um, yep, just to reduce the bulk for when it gets turned right side around. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to turn it right side around. Now we all get to struggle, watch me struggle just to turn this around. This is, yep, there we go. And now we have it right side around. Now our tag, as you can see, is over here and you can either top stitch it that way or top stitch it that way. So we top stitch it this way. Then the tag will be on the right hand side. It doesn't matter. It's personal preference. Um, but the right hand side looks right to me. And then we're going to top stitch this now at one eighth of an inch, um, right there. So make sure your seam ends are out of the way and we're just top stitching this. Now, as you get to your tag, if your tag is like mine, it's sticking up like this, just make sure before you get to it, bring it back down just so it gets caught as well, so it sits nicely on that seam. There we go. So that's one of the divider pockets there. And what we're actually going to do, which I shouldn't have taken it off, I just wanted to show you guys the tag, is we're now going to continue to baste around all the edges. And all this is doing is just making sure that it sits nicely and I probably took that in a little bit too early. Yep, so it's just making sure that everything sits nicely. It's a nice little divider pocket, so it's got some structure to it. And that is my baby girl. Sorry, my little girl was crying, so I just had to race off to tend to that. So I just stopped at just that one quarter, but here we go. So I just need to finish this off if I didn't put it in reverse. See, so it just shows you, right? Like anyone can make silly mistakes like that. So get that all done. There we go. So that's the divider pocket all done. So just pull that out. So that's the divider pocket with your label tag. Now the second piece we're doing exactly the same thing. So fold it right sides together and stitch it at a quarter inch. If you're lazy like me, you don't even clip it. I really should, but most of the time I just find myself not doing it. There you go. So done at quarter inch, and then we are snipping our corners. To reduce bulk, flip it right side out, and then we are going to top stitch at one eighth of a seam allowance. One eighth of an inch of seam allowance. There And that is now your two divider pockets done. And we'll move on to the next step. Now we're going to get to the interior assembly and we're going to do the side gussets. So we've got four pieces of these side gussets. Gussets? Gussets? Yeah. Anyway, we've got four pieces of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold 
them together. Yep, fold long edges right sides together. That's what it is. So just like that. I'm going to match up that top end there and we're going to clip it so it doesn't move as we're sewing. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to sew the top and one of the edges. So for me, I'm going to sew this top edge and this long edge as well with a quarter inch seam allowance. Perfect. After we've done that, what we're going to do is, we're going to obviously clip this off, and we're going to clip our corners to once again reduce bulk. If you are anything like me, your scissors sometimes grow legs and walk off. So we're cutting the corners to reduce bulk, making sure not to cut your threads as you go. Here you go. And then after we've done that, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it inside out, and right side out, so that now the right side is on the outside. And make sure you push those corners out however you choose to. I normally like to use a um, crochet hook because I have one of those normally at my sewing desk, which again isn't here. Like I said, things like to go walkabouts. So I've just got the back of a pen here and I'm just kind of using that to help me squeeze all that out. Yep. So now that that's done and all turned out, we are going to top stitch just the top edge and the bottom edge at 1 8 seam allowance. So that's all done, I've top stitched it. So now what you'll have is, this is right side out, top and bottom is top stitched. You have one side that's been sewn together and an open side. And now we're going to repeat exactly that with the other three pieces as well. And that's all done. So now we have the one, two, three, four pieces of the side gusset all done, ready to go. Thanks to editing, my side gussets have magically changed to blue. No, they haven't. I am batch sewing and I forgot that I was filming the blue one. So I filmed the wrong gusset colour, but the make is obviously exactly the same. So we've got our four completed gusset pieces and our two completed divider pieces and now we're going to put them together. So I'm going to start with the one that has the um, label on it. 
If you don't use labels, either one's the same, but what we're gonna do is the seam is on the top, so the bottom is the folded section and the seam is on the top. And we're gonna get one of these. And this is my raw edge. This is my sewn together edge. So I'm gonna have my sewn together edge facing inwards. I'm going to fold this piece in half, just like that. So my raw edge and my seam are there. And I'm going to place this right over here, over my divider piece. So as you can see, that's center to center. And I'm just gonna clip that on the top and make sure the bottom is right as well. And then I'm going to clip that bottom as well. And just a reminder again, so this part is the finished edge is up against my label tag and my raw edge is at the back. Obviously, if you don't have a label tag, then it doesn't really matter what way you have this, but if you do use a label tag, make sure that is your completed edge. And so now we're going to do it on this edge as well as on the other one as well. So again, raw edge, finished edge, fold it in half, make sure raw edge is on the back, and finished edges here. So both finished edges are on this side facing each other. And I'm going to clip that together. And then on the back, you'll find both raw edges are facing each other. And we are folded center, just like that. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to sew this edge, so your short edge here, at a quarter inch seam allowance. So again, your divider pocket is sandwiched between your gusset pieces, and we're sewing that together at a quarter inch seam allowance. So now the other side and at quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So I know I've said this a couple of times, but this is a point to bear in mind. Um, again, so we're now done on this gusset divider piece. We have the finished edges out the front like this, facing each other and on the back, the raw edges facing each other. So that's one of them done. And now we're gonna move on and do exactly the same with the second piece as well. So the second piece obviously doesn't have the label tag. So like I mentioned before, your sewn edge is at the top. And again, we're going to make sure, I just like to make sure that I still do it exactly the same way as if my label was there. So still finished edges, at the front like this, folded together halfway, and again finished clean edge on the front, fold that in half, and put that, and a quarter inch seam allowance is what we are sewing this at. So that is now both your pieces of your divider with the gussets are all done. So I'm just going to trim off and clean off the edges by just trimming off all these long threads. Okay, so now we're putting the um, interior pieces all together now. So what I have here is your main lining piece, um, your two dividers that you've just completed as well as your D-ring tabs that you completed earlier. If you're doing a crossbody bag, you will have two D-rings like me. Um, if you're doing a wristlet, you'd only have one, or you could still have two, it's up to you. 
and if you were doing the grommet version obviously you wouldn't have your d-ring tabs now um, to protect the pattern measurements i have pre-done this bit but what you would be doing now is getting your pattern piece your main lining pattern piece on it there are markings you're transferring the markings onto your fabric which i have just done here and here as well as on the bottom there and there so on both sides um, if you don't want to transfer from the pattern pieces jassy also has the measurements on her instructions and the measurements are from the bottom up so you'll have your two measurements one here one here to make it easier I'm just going to put these two clips there so you can see exactly where they are so we've got a bottom measurement and a top measurement right there now the first part we're going to do is the divider with your label tag so I've got my label tag here, that's the top, there's my label tag, and I'm going to put that just above the top mark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the gusset, so remember how we had the finished edge of the gusset on the front and the raw edge on the back, so I'm going to get the raw edge from the back, I'll pull that to the front like this, and I'm going to clip it right here so this is the bottom mark and i'm just placing it on the bottom mark that's exactly where it is going and it's raw edge to the lining and same over on this side i'll do a close-up a little bit later to show you exactly what it is but hopefully this side will show it a bit better so that's your front which is your finished and your back which has your raw edge so i'm getting the raw edge from the back and i am matching it up with the top mark. So the base of the the base of this is matched up with the top mark that I've made. And I'm just going to clip that on right there. And I'm going to add an extra clip for security. There we go. So just to bring that up closer to show you, so I've got the raw edge of the gusset is matched to the lining right there. And then this is your finished edge is still right there. That's the top, that's the bottom. There's your label if you were using a label. Now we'll do the same with the second piece, except if you're using a directional piece, this is being placed opposite way. So this is the top here, this is the top here, and the top will be facing that way. So that's the top, that's the top, bottom, bottom. So the bottom of this one is going to match up with the second dot. And again, we are doing it with the raw edges. So I had that one upside down, so I need to turn that back around. So I've got my finished edges on the top. And this is my top, that's my base. Raw edge out. I'm clipping that to that marker right there. And save over on this side. That's my finished edge. Flip it around, get my raw edge out. Raw edge clipped to my mark right there. And then a second clip. I thought I got a big clip, I didn't. Second clip, just clip that on as well. Perfect. So now we have both of these clipped down raw edges of the gusset to the lining. I know I've said that a few times, but that's a mistake that us testers have made a few times. I've made a few times. You probably saw my holes. I've just done that mistake again. So that's why I'm emphasizing it. Now D-rings then go just on top of your dividers, closer to the curved edge. So just on top right there and just on top right there. So I'll just clip those in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch that at a 1 8 seam allowance. Okay, so I thought I'd just film this little bit of extra content. So this isn't part of Jassy's pattern, but it's something that I use and I thought I'd show you guys how I do it. Um, so Jassy get, has given us a couple of ways of um, installing, I guess, methods for your 
carry strap, so for your strap, your crossbody strap or your grommet, uh, which is through D-rings or through a grommet, is what I should be saying. Um, I also use um, Chicago O-rings. So that's, let me see if I can bring that up closer. So that's kind of like this, and it's installed with a screw on the underside. So I just thought I'd show you guys how I install these. So I've already pre-marked out the spot. So I like to go about an inch in from the edge and three eighths of an inch up from the divider. And then I mark it right there. A little bit of stabilizer on the bottom is just, um, you know, good, is it good housekeeping? I don't know. Anyway, it helps keep your fabric stable and a little bit more solid. Whenever you put anything, install anything on your fabric, I always like to put stabilizer on the back. And then I just get my stiletto and I poke a hole through and a bit of a wiggle. So you can use, if you prefer, um, those hole cutty thingies. I don't like to use these because even on my number two, which is the smallest available setting, I find it a bit too loose. I like to, I like the hole to just be tight enough that I have to kind of wiggle the screw in a bit to really get it to pop out in there. Um, just makes me feel like it's a little bit more secure so there's less room to fight. Um, that one's come through really easily because I've actually already done this because I tried filming this before and it didn't work. Anyway, long story. So poke your screw through just like that. And one thing to be wary of is your screw height. So especially when you're using thin fabric like this, this is the sophisticated twill. Um, your screw might be too long for the fitting if your fabric is also thin. So I've just used a light surface of foam on the back as a stabilizer. Um, but I have checked, obviously that side's already installed, that my screw isn't too long. So I know that this is okay. Um, but if it's the first time that you're using that particular setting on a particular fabric, always double check. Now, another good thing to always get in the habit of is when you're installing screws, glue. Always a tiny bit of glue. Um, it just helps make sure that as you use the bag and maybe there's a bit of movement, a bigger wiggle room, the setting won't come out as easily because hopefully the glue will help add that extra tier of protection. So it doesn't matter what type of glue you're using. Um, I've used super glue, I've used craft glue, I've used all sorts of glue. This is a Gorilla Glue, to be honest, it's just whatever was closest to me that I found that was an adhesive I will use. And then we're gonna screw this in. So obviously the bottom is a screw, so if you do have a small screwdriver, you can screw it in that way. I tend to hold the screw with one finger and screw this in through the o-ring setting with my hand and then after i finish that i then go in with my screwdriver and tighten at the back here we go so that's pretty good so that's that on there now just want to make sure because this is obviously on really quite tight because as you saw before the fabric's quite thin so i just want to make sure that the opening on the o-rings are within the circle and that way that's the o-ring connectors installed so that's another way of a connector if you didn't want to use the d-rings or the grommets do apologize for the sudden change in lighting we've just had a storm come over so i've just had to turn on my desk lamp which is a little bit yellow for my liking but at least we can see so this is the lining piece. I've just gone and base stitches, base stitched the divider pockets and the D-rings on with that 1 8 seam allowance. So that's all now secure. And we're going to move on to the magnetic snap. So Jassy has given us the magnetic snap placement on both the lining pattern piece as well as your instructions. So you can grab that from that. I've also measured out my center and I've just marked it there with a little cut. I like to do that within the seam allowance because it just makes it nice and easy to see. Now, we're going to need our obviously magnetic snap, the washers for the snaps, 
as well as an instrument to poke a hole and a bit of the leftover stabilizer that you had put aside. So I was using the Sophisa foam, so that's that right there. And so first up, after we've marked our spot, which I have done right there, um, I'll zoom in a little bit more just so you guys can see it all a little bit better. So there we go. So that's my marked spot right there. And I'm going to, because this is non-fray fabric, I'm going to poke the hole through just to make it easier so I can see it on both sides. And then I'm going to turn the fabric upside down. So right there, you can still see that's my hole. So that's my spot for my magnetic snap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scrap bit of foam or whatever you want to use. So what this does is it just protects your fabric from um, the magnetic snap. It adds a little bit more, um, I guess, structure, thickness to it. So because this is so piece of foam, it was really just as simple as take the backing off and stick it on. Um, if you're using whatever else you're using, just make sure you attach it however you would attach it, I guess. <laughs> um, so that's all attached there now. So I'm going to turn that up back to the right side. Now, that has the stabilizer underneath. We've got our hole marked out. So now we are all ready to install. So we are going to install the male part to the liner. So here are your two magnetic pieces. So the male one is the one that has the little bit of sticking out. So that's your male and that's your female. So we're going to be doing the male one right now. So here's a little tip that I learned quite recently, actually. So if you get your washer, so your washer obviously matches up with your piece. You measure up your washer so that the dot or whatever, I'm going to bring this in closer just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Sorry, this is going to be wobbly. So I've got my washer here. And there's my spot. So I'm putting my washer directly over my spot so that that is the center point. And then on these two sides now, that is where my prongs would be. If I just grab the magnetic snap, whoop. and if I didn't magnetic snap it together, so let's do that again. So that's my prongs, right? So I'm going to use a pen and I'm gonna draw on those two cutouts so that I have exactly where my prong marking is. Okay, so like I said, I'm just going to get my pen and I'm going to draw in these two little prong lines just so I know exactly where my prongs are meant to be. There we go. So now I have exact spots of what I'm meant to be cutting and what I'm meant to be doing. Okay, I've brought you guys in nice and close. So if I take my washer off, I now have my prong markings right there. And I've got my center point right there. I'm going to get my seam ripper. I'm going to poke in and then I'm going to seam rip. Poke in, seam rip. But just be careful when you poke in and seam rip, you don't go too far. Bearing in mind that you also now have stabilizer under there as well. So poke, seam rip. See, it's not far that you have to go at all. Poke, seam rip. So that's now done. I've poked my holes. I've seam gripped it. That's gone through my stabilizer as well. So now I get my magnetic snap and I'm just going to thread that through those two holes that I've poked. So if you've done what I have, you've probably not cut it enough, which isn't a big problem. Not cutting it enough is a better problem to have than cutting too much because if you cut too much there's no coming back right so if you don't cut enough you can just slowly poke until it's through so that's the back as you can see so that's through now just to show you the front again that's the front with the male part and the back with that bit out so what I'm going to do now, now that they're both through, is I am going to get the washer 
and I am going to put the washer through it just like that and then I'm going to bend these so there's a bit of argument over which way to bend to bend that way to bend them both center or to bend them outwards I used to bend them inwards I now like to bend them outwards um, my reason for it is that I feel like if I bend it outwards it does sit a bit flatter because sometimes your prongs are longer than being able to both sit flatly there so by going outwards I kind of no longer have that problem so I've just bent them both out so that's locked that into place that's the back and again that's the front so as you can see that's all installed really nicely and for the back here now um, you can either put a little bit of tape over it or a bit of um, stabilizer whatever you choose to do just to again protect your fabric as it comes into contact with that um, Okay, we're now up to the exterior assembly. So this is for style B, the flap accent. So I'll also be doing the other two styles as well because there's three exterior styles. So all three of these are covered. So skip to whichever chapter you're meant to be on. So this is for style B, your flap accent. So you will have um, your Okay, flap, so I've got a I little bit right of scrap. Here, so I'm just going well to use the scrap your, on the um, back just to protect piece. my fabric. So, um, just because, I mean, um, any protection is better than none, us, right? Um, options to quilt this um, exterior piece if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to do that because I don't trust my quilting skills, to be honest. Um, so, I'm just doing this as the exterior flat accent version with two different fabrics. So, um, what we're going to do now is we are getting the flap and we are lining it up with the exterior piece right sides together and just make sure that that all lines up and we're going to clip it together and then we are going to sew it together with a 3 8 seam allowance So that's now sewn together at our 3 8 seam allowance and then what we're now going to do is we are going to trim off the corners just to reduce bulk so it's just this corner here and this corner here making sure not to cut your threads trim that right there and then we're going to open it up and we are going to press the seam over towards the external section so away from the flap and then we are going to top stitch at one eighth of a seam allowance right there. there we go so that is now top stitched towards the flap and that is your external all done for your style B flap accent. And now we're up to the external. So we're almost there. So we're gonna sew up the external now. Um, so with this pattern, there is three styles and this is the style C directional. So I will do each one, um, but this is style three or style C, the directional one. So with this one, you will have one piece of your flat print as well as two pieces of your piece C exterior. Okay, so we're going to start sewing our style C directional now. So these are your two exterior piece Cs and we're going to line the two long edges right sides together and their bottoms to bottom so this is bottom to bottom I'm going to line them up just like that 
that. I probably didn't get that in the camera angle. I'm just going to clip that together and then I'm going to sew that together with a 3 8 inch allowance. A 3 8 of an inch. 3 8 seam allowance. That makes more sense. There we go. Um, and I don't know if anyone reads the start of Jassy's patterns, but she has a little tip there to hold your ends. So it's something that I must admit I forget to do sometimes, but it stops your um, thread from like birds nesting at the start. Okay, so we are sewing that together at 3 8. So this is right sides together, bottom to bottom. So the bottom of the fabric to the bottom of the fabric. And there we go. So that's all sewn together now. We're going to take that off, cut off the threads. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this little corner here, as well as this little corner here, just so that we can um, reduce the bulk potentially. When you trim off that seam allowance, just make sure you do not cut your threads. Obviously, that is not a good idea. Okay, so now that that's done, we are going to top stitch. So we open that up. So this is bottom to bottom. And we are going to open your seam to either side, just like that. So, and then we're going to top stitch both sides. So we're going to top stitch this side and we're going to top stitch that side afterwards both with a 1 8 seam allowance so you've moved the seam towards their each respective sides and we are top stitching that so I know you all saw how I did that I didn't do it all the way so now I'm just going underneath and I'm just moving it to the right bit before I continue that's 1 8 on that side trim that and then now we're going to do the other side. So top stitch that also at one eighth of a seam allowance. Done. So that's all sewed now. So now we have a piece of fabric where we've got top, bottom, bottom, top. And this has been sewn together with the seam allowance, each top stitched their respective sides so it doesn't add bulk okay now what we're going to do is we are going to sew the flap on so we've got the flap here and our new PC so we're going to sew the flap and we're going to do it again right sides together right sides together just like that so this one is the top here and we're going to line that up and we're going to clip that together it doesn't matter whether you sew it to the top of this bit or if you do it to this bit because like I said this is both directional fabrics we've made sure now that both of these are the top so it doesn't matter whether you do it to this side or this side as long as they are right sides together. There we go. Or unless you have like a specific print that you wanted at a specific spot. And now we are going to sew this together again at a 3 8 seam allowance. So that's your 3 8 seam allowance done. And once again, we are going to snip off our corners just again to make sure that we re reduce our bulk so Jassy reminds us to do this on a lot of her patterns um, this helps make sure that um, the patterns are domestic friendly as well just every little bit of bulk counts right when you're playing with a domestic machine and making bags so hey <laughs> I'll do it okay so now that we've done that we're going to turn it right side up and then we're going to top stitch and this time we are top stitching with the seam allowance pressed away from the flap so the seam allowance is going to be on the exterior section so this bit is over on this side so 
I'm gonna top stitch there and we are top stitching again at a 1 8 seam allowance. Making sure I've got my seam tucked in nicely. Done. Here we go. And that is now our external piece for zoom that out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So this is our external piece now for our type C directional completed. So just to give you an idea, that will fold up like this and this will fold down like this. So that kind of gives you all your prints are then facing the right direction, which is why it's your directional print version. Okay, we're now up to the external assembly. If you are doing style A, the one piece non-directional, then this section is for you. I am filming all three of the versions as well, so you will see them all. But this is style A, the non-directional. So I've just put down a bit of fabric underneath just to, again, protect measurements, just so my cutting mat isn't showing. Um, but that's the only reason it's there. So this is your one piece external. So what we're going to do now is flip it to the wrong side and we're going to attach our um, stabilizer. So that's the good thing with style one, style A. There's no sewing needed. Your external piece is already done. So it's just about your stabilizer. So I've talked about the stabilizer before. I've already said I use um, Sophie's of Foam from Sophisticated Craft. So this is the heavy. There's a couple of ways to make sure you are installing your stabilizer correctly. Um, so some people like to measure out your centers and I've done that on the stabilizer here. You can just see my dots there um, on the centers. But one thing that I found works really well, especially for bigger pieces like this, especially for suffisive foam, because, you know, you put it down and like it's kind of done, really. That's why I like it. It's easy. Um, is I can use the difference between the measurement of the exterior piece and the stabilizer, work out what that is, halve that. So then I know what the extra on the outset is. So I've marked that down on this. So that means all I have to do now is just attach the stabilizer super easily. So like I said, this is your Sophisa foam. Um, so I just need to undo it, stick it down and um, peel the rest off. And that is my stabilizer pretty much done. There we go, so that's my stabiliser on, it's all nice and pretty. Now, obviously, if you were using Decaval or um, foam or even fleece, just follow the instructions as to how you would normally adhere your stabiliser to the fabric. So that's done. Okay, now we're going to attach the magnetic stack snap to the exterior. So whether you've done style A, style B or style C, right now you're up to the point where you just have a giant piece of external fabric, all assembled, ready to go. So on your pattern piece, you would have noticed the placement. So can you, so now's when you transfer the placement over to your external or Jassy's also given us that measurement in inches in the pattern in instructions sorry she's given it to us in the pattern instructions as well so you can also measure it out i've pre-done that just so once again i'm not giving out your um the measurement from the pattern so that's it right there so we're pretty much installing it exactly how we did um the other one except this time we are doing the female snap uh, the female section because obviously we've already um, installed the mail so we're doing the one that is indented now so same kind of situation and same type of rules apply so we've marked our center except the only difference this time is we don't have to worry about putting a stabilizer or something underneath on the back side because 
we already have stabilizer on the full piece. So we've already got that part sorted. So we're gonna move straight on to installing. So let me get us in nice and close. Here we go. So there's my spot right there. Like I showed you guys before, I like to put my washer on top so that my washer is right on top and it gives me then my exact measurements as to where I need to cut my prong markings from. I just get a pen, I mark those two up, take the washer away and there's my two markings nice and clear for me to cut out. I then get my trusty seam ripper. I don't know if trusty is the right word. Definitely gets a lot of use. And I'm pushing down from one end and bringing it up, making sure I don't overcut. Because overcutting, it's hard to come back from. Undercutting, you can always come back in and do it again. If you've overcut, <laughs> that's too bad. You've got holes in your fabric now. There we go. So I've just done that. So now I've got my slits cut and we're all good to go. So I'm going to get my uh, female magnetic part and I am going to put that in so that that is flush. Now the female part is normally fatter as well, or thicker I guess, deeper, yeah, than the male equivalent. So we've just got that down in there, flop that around and we're just going to flatten that. So that's nice and flattened. Come back, have a look at that. Yep, we're happy with that. So now we're just going to, once again, I just like to use my leftovers because why not? It saves it going in the bin, right? I'm just gonna cut a little bit of leftovers. Oh, and this is something people never told me when I was a beginner. I used to get really confused with, what do you mean by just get a bit of scrap? Like how much, like what's the measurement? There really does, it doesn't matter. So I think if you're like me and you overthink, like how big a piece of scrap do I need? The answer is enough to cover what you're covering. So if it's too much and you cover it more, that's fine. If it's not enough and you don't cover it, that might be a slight problem. But there we go. So that's it there, all covered. And back to the front. I'll zoom us back out so we're not crazy in a zoom mode right now. And that's our magnetic snap now installed. So I forgot to mention as well because I don't use them, but if you do metal um, logo tags as well, now is the time to install it on your exterior piece just after you've done your magnetic snap. So Jassy's also given us the instructions um, with the measurements in the instructions as well as on the pattern piece for where to install your metal logo. So she's given us the inches. Again, it's just from the center, measure in and install it however you install it. I don't use them, so I can't show you how to do it. <laughs> okay, so now that we've completed our exterior panel, however you've chosen to do it, whether it is your non-directional, your directional or your flap accent, um, we're now able to start in um, putting the whole bag together. So we have our exterior panel. So like I said before, however you've chosen to do it, your exterior panel is going to be exactly the same length now. Um, and they're gonna look exactly the same in terms of you have your curved edge on one side and your magnetic snap on the other. So this one is my directional one that I've been showing you guys throughout. So here it is. Um, we've got it right side up and then we have the lining piece also right side up. So your lining piece and your exterior piece now will be exactly the same size. Again, regardless of whatever method you have chosen, whether it is your directional or your accent flap, your lining and your exterior will now be exactly the same size. So we're now going to put them together, right sides together, and then we are going to clip it together, and then we're going to sew it together. So I'm just going to clip that all together. However many clips you use is obviously a personal choice. I don't tend to use a lot of clips. I use clips um, 
Right here's my D-ring, so I'll put one there because I don't want the D-ring to kind of slip out and get under my needle. Um, obviously at the start, just at the corners, I will use one. Um, and to be honest, I don't use that many clips because A, I lose them all the time and B, I'm lazy. So there we go, so that's clipped there clip there see here's the d-ring wanting to escape already so just slide the d-ring back in clip that shut and then clip that edge and center to center is all matched up so we are all good here to start sewing so i'm going to sew this with a 3 8 seam allowance so we're going to sew all of this all the way around and back up so because we're going to leave an opening here for birthing so um, depending on your fabric type you can leave this whole section unsewed um, Jassy has suggested and I do like to do it like that as well is to sew along here a little bit as well with that 3 8 so if you've sewn along here as well so you kind of do down here and then around all the way back and then across over here as well it just makes it easier to top stitch and close that opening up if you have somewhere to go off so you see exactly where your 3 8 inch um, seam allowance is so I'll take you over to the sewing machine and we'll get that sewed up okay so now that we've clipped our lining and main piece we're gonna start sewing so we're gonna sew from the base like I said we want to leave um, a gap opening but we want to start sewing on this side just to create that 3 8 um, seam allowance to make it easier later on to clip it and close it back up now um, obviously you can choose which side you prefer to sew on I prefer to sew on the lining side up um, when I have the um, stabilizer on the reason being is because the stabilizer um, can get caught on my sewing foot so I just find if I'm sewing on the um, lining side then I don't have to worry about my stabilizer so it's just it's just a little bit easier for me so this is with a 3 8 seam allowance um, this is um, hopefully not going to be too hard to sew um, to be honest, I've got my tripod set up exactly at the spot where I need to help manoeuvre. So, um, I do apologise if my hand is covering the needle, um, so you can't see as well. Just make sure as you come to the bits where, so this is my D-ring here, that obviously it is tucked out of the way, which is also one of the reasons why I like to have a clip there. It just makes it easy to remind myself, hey, there's something there to watch out for. Um, obviously this is a big piece, so I think you just saw how my fabric was bending in the way. So just make sure you give yourself time, no reason to rush. Just do it slowly. There's no winning any games for being faster sewer that I know of anyway. Now with the curved bit, I find that this design, Jassy has made this curved bit super easy to do. So I am actually able to do it in one go. But like I said before, there's no prize for sewing super fast. So just... If you need to hand crank it because you're new at sewing and you want to take your time, do that because you're better off taking your time and getting it right instead of having to pull out your seam ripper. Um, especially if you are sewing with um, vinyl, for example, because obviously when you sew with vinyl, once your needle pokes a hole in it, you've got a hole in it. So take your time and do what you need to do. So as I come down this edge, see so that was my D-ring there and I didn't pay attention to it enough because I was too busy. I don't even know what I was too busy doing. I don't know what I was too busy doing. But I can always go back over there and refix that bit up if I need to. Just put back in my 3 allowance if it is a problem. 
So we're just coming down to the bottom now, as you can see, just the way that I've set up with my tripod and everything, I don't have that much room. So this is a big piece. So if you are able to stretch out your sewing table, definitely do that. Make it a bit easier for yourself. Don't do what I'm doing. And try to make it hard by giving yourself an unreasonable amount of room. Okay, so that's all done now. So just cut the seams off it there. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to um, bring the camera back a bit just to show. So that's it all sewn up. I'm actually not too sad about the D-ring section there. That's all good. So check that I'm happy with the stitches, which I am. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim the corners. So just this one here at the base, I'm going to cut that and I'm going to cut that. And I'm just going to do a tiny clip here as well as here, just on those bends. Um, do not clip your straight edges um, because we want all of that left there. So when we top stitch, it'll catch nice and easily. So just grab my scissors and I'm just going to trim that off. Making sure not to cut your stitches because um, that is not good and not fun. Okay, we're happy with that. So cut that. So this is just to make sure when you turn it inside out or right side out, it'll be nice and easy to do. Okay, so that's all trimmed now. And now what I'm going to do is birth it. So I'm going to turn it inside out from this flap. I don't know if I want you guys to watch me do this because I am, um, let me see if I can move this back so I can actually come in a bit. Now you get to see my whole mess. I am the most um, uncoordinated person when it comes to birthing. So I find if I shove my whole arm in there, get right down to the bottom, and then I kind of push that bottom in and then slowly come out that way. That seems to be the best way to work for me. As you can see, I've left a really big gap, but even then, I am still a bit awkward when it comes to birthing, which is probably why I prefer binding. Yep, you heard that, I prefer binding. I know, I know, not a lot of people say that, but <laughs> that's me. Um, I think this one's actually doing quite well, so it knew I was coming on camera, and it decided, hey, I'm gonna behave myself. Okay, so, that's it semi birthed Now, what you may have noticed just then is these are my dividers. So they're supposed to be on this side. So as I birthed it, they've obviously flopped through the wrong side. So all we want to do is just flip that back over. So just make sure we flip it back to the right side. So the divider is on the lining side. And that is your main and birthed. So now I'm just going to get my fingernails around these edges to make sure that they are pushed out correctly, which all that side is. And then now we're going to come back up and do this corner. Remembering that we did sew around that edge to give us this crisp corner. So just like to do that gently because I don't want to rip too many of these seams here. You can see these are already kind of ripping off because I obviously didn't backstitch well enough. So now that that's all done, what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch the whole parameter. And while we're top stitching, that's also going to close off this bit here. So what I'm going to do now before I top stitch is I'm going to fold these, this section here and clip it down. Let me see. Does this work if I stand this way? Yep. So because I've got this bit already sewn to the edges, it kind of gives me a better idea as to where I should be or how far I should be folding down. So it gives me a bit of an easy access. So I just kind of keep folding down like that. And I clip that closed. So this should be roughly 3 8 of an inch. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly, but because you're kind of following along that line there that you've already sewn, which is a 3 8 allowance. So it should make it nice and easy to close that up. As you see, there you go. So I've closed that up. 
and that's all good. And now I'm going to top stitch the parameter. So it's up to you when you top stitch, if you top stitch with this up, the main side up or the lining side up. Um, the main consideration is just making sure that as you pull, whatever's in the way gets moved out of the way. So I'm going to start top stitching now. Okay, so I've got this all set up in my machine ready to top stitch. So we're going to top stitch with the 1 8 seam allowance. I did say before, you can choose whatever way you want up when you top stitch. I prefer that uh, with this one in particular, I like to do it um, from the lining side up. So I am hoping that my settings on my machine is right so that my top stitches on the top still look as crisp and clean as they should. Um, the reason why I like doing it from this way up is because of the divider pockets. So by going this way up, there's less stuff on the, well actually there's nothing on the front that will catch, whereas there are things on this side that would catch, like this divider pocket. So by having this side up, it gives me better, I don't know if control is the right word, but like a better view of everything I guess that's happening. And I can move things out of the way. Now. You might find, like you can see right now, my machine's struggling a little bit um, with some of those corners, especially if I've slowed down. Um, sometimes it's just a simple matter of um, changing your needle. Maybe your sewing needle's a little bit dull, which, to be honest, I know mine is. Um, sometimes it could just be that you are pushing your machine a bit hard. So um, do you know your machine's limitations. And, um, I know for a fact the fabrics that I've chosen here is definitely fine for my machine and if I'm having any problems it's definitely a needle problem not a oh no my machine can't handle it problem um, now as we top stitch don't um, I do like to hand crank a fair bit when I'm top stitching the reason being is I like to go slow and make sure that I am getting this right because top stitching um, yes it holds everything in place but it also is quite decorative if done nicely. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm doing it as nicely as I can. And sometimes that means taking my time and um, hand cranking my way through it. Um, I mean, some people probably don't have to hand crank and they're quite happy to just use the pedal. I don't know if I've mentioned this. Mine's an old vintage single machine. So I use a knee lever and I find that even though I've been using this for a while now, I'm still not super confident with the knee lever. So I just find like if I just, whenever in doubt, hand crank is my motto with top stitching. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it as well, um, but I like to start with this project, especially down on that base, on that flat line base. Um, the main reason being is obviously this was the bit that was opened and, um, sorry, I did not take care of my clothes properly there, um, but that was the bit that was open. So by starting there, I'm giving myself a chance to close this up um, before, you know, anything else happens. Now, that round of top stitching, I... I don't know if luck's the right word, but I didn't need a hump jumper, hump jumper, um, because most of the fabric I've used in is all quite similar um, in terms of bulkiness. So I didn't need to use my hump jumper, but if you do need to use a hump jumper, make sure you have it at the ready, especially with vinyl makes, they tend to need the hump jumper a bit more. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, this is a hump jumper. So all this does is I'll just give you a quick demonstration. So as you come to fabric sections where it's thicker and then thinner, sometimes your um, sewing needle foot, I'm going to zoom in on that to show you guys. See how that's slightly elevated? So if I used a hump jumper in there, just shove that in there like that, and then I keep sewing, it keeps my needle foot flat. So by keeping my needle foot flat, I'm then able to um, keep sewing without worrying about skip stitches or anything like that. So if you're getting skip stitches, this could be one of the reasons. So hump jumpers normally don't cost too much, but 
if you don't have one, I have been known to use needle boxes, either on the front or the back of your needle, of your um, sewing foot, um, folded pieces of fabric, pretty much anything to level that. That's all it is. Okay, that was a bit of talk about the humdrum, but anyway, so that's that exterior and lining all done. So if you had top stitched that properly, that should be all closed up now. That was your opening from your turning spot. So now what I'm going to do before I move on to the next step is I'm going to um, trim off all my loose threads and then I'm going to give the outside a quick little press because obviously as I was turning it, I've caused some wrinkles. So now is the time to press it one last time if you need to. And then we'll keep going from there. Okay, so I've given that a good press. I'm happy with all of that. Now, if you were doing grommets um, or eyelets, now's the time for you to do it and install. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you guys quickly how to install the grommet. So Jassy's given us all the measurements, so I've already noted it down. So that's the dot there and that's the dot there. Normally you would do it before you sew the zipper pocket in, but I forgot, so here I am. So just to show you that this happens. Now what we're going to do is if you've got the press, you're going to line up your dot with your hole and then you're going to cut your hole right on that dot. Okay, so now I'm going to cut the grommet hole. I've already got my grommet hole cut it in, so I'm just going to double check that I am happy with the placement, which I am and that I am not cutting my top stitching thread and push down and hopefully that will cut a hole. So mine hasn't cut all the way through. That's a problem I tend to get with my hole cutter, but that's fine. I will deal with that and cut that out by hand manually. Okay, so that's my hole cut and now we're going to swap across to the grommet setting tool so just grab that and then screw that in and I don't know who needs to know this because I obviously do so the way it's set this is your grommet you have your exterior bit and your backing one so your um, Exterior bit is normally the prettier one. That one goes first. And then we're going to put the bag down on top of that. And then the cover on top again. So the backing. And then we're just going to push down and pray to whoever you pray to and hope that it works. And that is your grommet set and all good to go. And then you're going to do the same on the other side too. Moving on, because I'm not eyeliding this one because I have my D-rings. Um, we are now down to the last section. So we have our, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our side gusset on the top. Doesn't matter which side, I tend to go with this side first. Just a preference, I don't know why. And what we're going to do is we are going to measure one eighth from the edge on this side. Okay, so we're going to measure one eighth from the edge on this side. So I'm just grabbing a ruler and I'm just going to mark a couple of spots. So here's on the, just on the inside here, just one eighth. Doesn't need to be um well, I say it doesn't need to be precise, but personally, I think sewing is all about precision, right? So just measuring out a couple of dots of one eight. I could do a giant line. I don't like doing giant lines. I just feel like there's a higher risk if you did a giant line of people being able to see your marks. So this is the outside. So I've marked it over underneath. There you can see my silver marks. That's my one eighth line. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my zipper pocket that we had previously sewn up. And I'm going to match my zipper pocket with those, with that one eighth, one eighth of an inch line right there. There we go. So, and I'm just going to clip it on 
right there. I've got to do one more clip here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to sew it so a quarter inch from here. So because that's one eighth, I'm just going to do a three eighth because it's just easier for me that way to be honest. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it from the bottom. I find that a little bit easier for me. So that's why I've made sure I've got enough clips there. I mean, you probably saw how I clip previously. I don't tend to clip a lot, but for such a small space, I've clipped a fair bit. And the reason being is because I'm about to do this. So I'm gonna sew this now at a 3 8 seam allowance to sew the gusset to my zipper pocket. So that's all sewn together now. Let's clip that off so I can show you guys. Okay. So there's my, oh, I'm too high up, am I? There we go. There's my gusset. There's my zipper pocket. So my zipper pocket is laid back one eight in from my side gusset. And then now I'm going to cut off this thread first. I'm really bad at cutting threads. So you'll see me finishing a bag and then cutting off a million threads. Okay, so now we're going to get the bottom gusset piece and we're going to match it up with this one. And they're facing like that. So if you look at the side of the bag, and then this is the gusset to the gusset and the zipper pocket is now sandwiched in between. So and I'm just going to put a couple of clips there. And what we're now going to do is we're going to sew all three layers of this, so the gusset, the zipper and the gusset together at a 3 8 seam allowance. So that should match up with that first stitch that you did before. So I'm going to move my D-ring out of the way, hopefully. And I'm going to come in to the 3 8 seam allowance. It might be easier even to do it from the bottom side. It's up to you because then you can actually see the stitch line that you've already done. See, see what I mean by um, thread? Forgot to cut it off again. So that's just random thread hanging about. There we go. So if you come down and do it from the other side so you can actually see your previous stitch line, that might make it easier. So you can literally just stitch on top of that. There we go. And so that is a 3 8 seam allowance. It's a little bit tidier if you do stitch it from this side, um, just because then you know exactly where you stitched before. So you can match up that stitching pretty much perfectly. There we go. So that's now sewn together with your 3 8 seam allowance. My messy threads that I'm trying to cut off. There we go. And now if you look at the side, you have gusset, zipper, gusset. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do another line of stitching. And it's going to be at a 1 8 seam allowance. So what that's going to do is it's going to close up your two gusset pieces, which obviously are your finished edges. And that's going to put away your raw edge of your zipper. So we're going to come in here. Um, I'm using white thread, um, but obviously if you can use a thread, I thought white thread would be good because it shows you guys exactly what I'm doing better. But obviously try to match up your thread color with this because your threads do show. So the more your thread is matched up to your fabric, the less it will show and the cleaner look you'll have without having to worry as much about your stitching. It's pretty much what I found. So there we go. So that's that all done. So you have your 3 8 stitch, your 1 8 stitch. Your zipper pocket is now invisible. You can't see that at all. And it is now attached on the inside just like that. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. So 
we're going to attach this to one of the gussets with a 1 8 1 8 in and then we're going to sew that together at a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance yep so we're going to sew that together at a 3 8 3 8 of the seam allowance so again it's up to you what side you like to do it from i still like to do it this way just so I just find it's easier for me to have it as flat as possible to my sewing machine bed. But everyone's different, so whatever works for you, works for you. And yep, so that is at my A. So that's now sewn together at that 3 8 seam allowance. Cut your threads, cut your threads, do all that. And then the other side of the gusset, same thing. We're going to measure it up gusset to gusset. Make sure if you've got any fraying, fraying fabric like this. I did say my fabric doesn't fray, which obviously was not true. Maybe my fabric printer used a different printer. I don't know. And then we're going to match those two up. Clip again. And again, I'm going to go back to the side that I just sewed on um, so that I can look at my stitches as I go and do my 3 8 seam allowance, matching my stitches to what I've already done to try and keep it as neat and tidy as possible so again this line of stitching is stitching up my gusset and also my zipper pocket there we go and then now we're going to 1 8 seam allowance stitch that together so that we can hide that zipper pocket Well, I don't know if I is the wrong word. Enclose. Enclose the zipper pocket. That's probably a better word, isn't it? There's nothing to hide here. There we go. And obviously I just need to trim all of my threads. So that's that bit done. I still have to trim my threads, but that kind of gives you an idea. So once that's all done, I'm now going to show you the sides see so that's your side on one side that's your side on the other and all we're going to do is just kind of maneuver these until we're happy with how it's sitting i still need to trim all these threads obviously but once these are all trimmed that is the bag completed so i'll just quickly go and trim those off now okay, so that's all my threads all trimmed off sorry i had to do that off camera i do tend to use a lighter so um, that's why I did it off camera. So that's all done now and as you can see all I need now is my um, strap and I have a cute little um, peony all completed in the directional print style 3 with the D-rings. So that is the end of our tutorial on these gorgeous peony um, bags so thank you for joining me so once again hopefully I've shown you all the steps to make all three versions so again just a quick reminder we have the non-directional style A we have the flap accent accent style B with the flap and the exterior and we've got the style C directional so that's all three of those um, and I hope you've heard, learned a couple of little tips. This is my first video so it's definitely going to get better I hope. Um, we've obviously had a few storms so lighting wasn't our best friend. I've since bought new tripods, new lighting systems so hopefully my next one will be much better. But anything, any feedback you want to give me please let me know. I promise I will read them. Um, but yep, that's it. That's our peonies 
all done three different styles and I've also included three different attachments. Your grommets, your O-rings, as well as your D-rings. So thank you so much for joining along with me and I hope you guys enjoy sewing this gorgeous bag.